Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, Jay-Z, John Coleman. Dio, what up? Well, I'm looking at my watch, and I think I may have a call. Oh, no. I think I may have double booked myself. Don't timestamp this. Don't say we only have 20-something minutes. Not, well, I think my call is at 4, and it's 3.30. Okay, yeah, so don't, mm, better get started. So, guys, gals, you can check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, at the Loners for Podcasts. Even Stitcher. Damn it, I don't know. Do Google that. Play. Yeah. If you're that. into social media, yeah. we're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're even on the, TikTok. At the Lone Officer Podcast. If you want to find Dustin, he's easy to find. Just go to LinkedIn. That's the best way to connect with him. At Dustin Owen. And we even have a LinkedIn, the Lone Officer Podcast page as well. Business page. Guess what it's called? At the Lone Officer Podcast. If you want to find me, don't. Just Google me, but don't. Okay. And we're ready to go, Dio. And eventually, we're going to have a website Damn called TLOP Online that will have even more content. You guys aren't even ready for that. Not even ready. Because le- neither are we because there's so much content. Hey, happy holidays. Hopefully, it'll be a Christmas present what? for everybody. Yes. Way to put it out there, Dio. Uh, John, eventually, you're going to get your shit together. We're going to get this thing launched. And then finally, if you want to comment, you can comment on YouTube. If you like what we're doing, like us, share us, tell everyone about us. Because the more people who tune in, the more we want to keep doing this. Yes. The minute people quit tuning in, we'll stop doing it. Mm, I'll keep doing it. Okay. No, I won't. Just buy my people want to tune in and listen to me just talk nonsense. <laughs> hey, I do love the fact that you fell in love with that brand new green hoodie. You know, that back you're to wearing back. it again. Back to you're back. Wearing it but again. it's fine because that joke won't make sense because we're going to drop Yvette's episode in between. So now. That we'll, wasn't even a joke, John. Oh, thank that you. wasn't even a oh. joke. I, I wasn't going to let the listeners know that we're recording two episodes back to back on a Friday afternoon. No, this is against your this is against your protocol. Just because you throw the glasses on, yeah, like oh, you, I'm way different now, like a completely <laughs> different outfit. Can't even tell. John, we even changed Yo. the centerpiece. Talking about the centerpiece. Yeah, talk about the centerpiece. You go. idea for the website. You oh. idea for the website. Oh God. Hey, okay. How cool would it be mm-hmm. to do this? Oh, yes. Let's let the listeners participate in the centerpiece. Because okay. if you watch this on YouTube, what you'll watch is the centerpiece changes. Yes. It's basically John comes in, he sets up the mics, <laughs> he sets up the light, sets up the yeah. cameras, and he starts stealing shit from, from my, my bookshelves yeah, and, and everything else that's yeah. in my office. Yes. And that ends up becoming the centerpiece. Correct. Rob Farragher, who was a guest on our show, like one of our first Episode guests, seven. if not our very first <laughs> yeah, guest, yeah, yeah. Rob said to me, dude, you got to get rid of that Clyde Mays bottle of whiskey. That- he goes, let me buy you something better. Okay, yes. Don't- I'm like, Rob, if you buy us something better, I'll actually put it yes. as the centerpiece. That'd be dope. I'll give you a shout out. I'll yes. let people know, hey, look, if you're a small business owner and you need a great representative for yes. your 401k, yes. if you need to offer your employees a 401k, what? call Rob Farragher. What? But I really can't do that until Rob puts that mm. bottle of JMO or that bottle of Maker's Mark. Or I'll take Black Label. Okay. Johnny Walker. All I'll right. Take it back. Little little Johnny Walker Black, and then we'll throw it up there. Yeah. And if the listeners have something creative that they want to send us, I can't wait. Not grotesque. Mm-hmm. Not not perishable. I mean, send it. No body parts. No. Well, you can send whatever you dead guys animals. want, and it doesn't mean it's going to be on the show. But please, we welcome all and any right. applicants. Yeah. So then it'd be cool. To eventually, like through the website, and then we can post pictures, what? and we do like a shout out to the person Look who at sent you. it. Interactive. Like, Look at that. Yeah, video. wouldn't that be fun? Did you go to school for advertising? Yeah. Interesting <laughs> enough. Yes. You, you would know, think. You go would UCF. Think. Go Knights. Go Knights. Charge on. And today's episode is all about what? You tell me, John. What are we going to talk about? Buying leads. All right. Perfect. So, because we're on a time crunch, because Mister Dupree is trying to get a hold of me. Okay. I must have told him 3.30. I have it written down at 4 o'clock, so I apologize. Hey, Jonathan, I apologize. if you. I wish we were live. Like, hey, bro, I'm on air right now. Let me take it right now. It's all right. I'll have to tell him. Okay. Uh, Hey, listen to like the seven-minute mark. I shouted you out. That's true. My my watch was blowing up. His phone call was trying to come in. All is forgotten. Yep. Hey, bro, I'll call you back in four. One day, this (laughs) this episode one day is going to have like a quarter million views, and then he'll be thanking us then. Willie? Really? Yes. And hopefully Rob Farragher will too. And then that bottle of, of, of Johnny Walker Black Label mm. has now turned into some pappies. Oh, you and this pappy shit, man. It's just, it's that's what all the cool kids are drinking. Is it? Yeah. When you say pappies, it reminds me of like Tito's. Like, oh, well, vodka, whatever. Yeah. It is. All right. Fine. It's not, though. <laughs> just FYI. It's not. Okay. 
No, buying leads. So mm -hmm. these are questions yes. that, uh, that that we get, whether it's via YouTube, whether it's via LinkedIn, people emailing us, mm -hmm. uh, trying to hit me up on my cellar, you know. <laughs> um, it's a terrible way to get a hold yeah. of me, by the way. I may call you from my cell phone, but... Don't call him. Yeah. <laughs> It's like That's, a one way. It is a one way it's, cell phone. It, it, I promise you, it is a legit plan through AT and T. But you would act like it's one of those prime co phones where, like, no, 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 no. Now, yeah, this one, it, it doesn't receive calls. It just, just, just makes them burner phones. It's not a burner, John. It's actually my same number, 407 497 Wow, don't, wow, that's dangerous. One Bro, day, that that number is all over the internet. But one day. Yeah, one day I'll have go get a. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go yeah, get yeah, a. Real, I'll have a work phone and yeah. I'll have a personal phone. It's called the T Lop line. The T Lop line. The T Lop line is blowing up. What's happening? That's one day. No, let's talk about a little bit. Let's riff on this. Let's okay. riff on on buying leads. Okay. Because what you notice is we're on 170 plus, almost 180 yes. episodes. Yes. Not once have I done an episode on buying leads. No, you haven't. Cool. I'm not a fan of it. That's what you said, Miriam. I'm times. not a fan of buying leads. Can it be done? Yes. Are there mortgage loan originators, mortgage branches, and mortgage companies who make a living, a healthy living, buying mm -hmm. leads? Yes. Well, shit, have you ever bought a lead, Dustin? Uh, yes, John, I have bought leads more times than I can remember. Really? And I don't know where I've lost more money, on the craps table in Vegas? No. Or on buying leads? Really? Yeah, so to me, buying leads is you're either all in or you're all out. There is no pussyfooting around. You can't be half in, half out. I can't, you can't be half in, half out. No, it's kind of like being a parent. You're all in or you're all out. Okay. Okay. Buying leads is the same exact way. So let's talk about if you were to buy leads, why would you do it? Is it strategic? How do you make it strategic? Is it long-term or short-term? Right. And is it the highest and best use of your money? Because mm. I've yet to be convinced that it's the highest and best use of my money. Let's say I were to call someone like, <clears throat> I don't know, Zillow, mm -hmm. or bankrate.com, or the other one, Lending Tree. Mm -hmm. okay? And let's say I was going to purchase a lead. I have to look at A, what type of lead am I getting? And B, how much money is it costing? So prime and too much. Right. Okay. And then, and then am I the type of sales professional that's really good at working those types of leads? Because a lead that you buy is way different than the lead that gets referred to you by a ex-neighbor, ex-coworker, uh, a client of yours, a realtor, referral partner, or a builder. When those people refer you, they should be referring you, hey, call John Coleman at Waterstone because that dude is good because he'll take great care of you like he took great care of me. Skip right to the front of the line when you got a... Correct. You skip right to the front of the line. <laughs> yeah. When you're buying a lead, those people don't know you. You are starting off as a commodity. So automatically, it's about rate and fees. Hmm. That's not a fun way for any business and in any industry. I don't care if you're an attorney, an accountant, a dentist, a doctor, or a used car salesman. When the first thing out, out of the gate is rate and fees, it's not a fun transaction, mm -hmm. at least not for you, the professional. Mm -hmm. And then you might not be good enough to negotiate. You can't play on that particular field, right? That's the varsity level. Mm -hmm. And you may be freshman team still, mm -hmm. right? Or you just might not even play that sport. So you, you have to think of what is it going to take? Okay, well, if I'm going to buy leads, am I a master salesperson? Am I offer to win on on rate and fees. Mm -hmm. And then the person doesn't already know me, like me, or trust me. And therefore, they may be less responsive to me because it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. If I received 100 realtor referred leads, whether it's in a month or in a quarter, mm -hmm. I know that statistically, I'm going to end up pulling credit on about 50% of them. And of those 50% that I pull credit on, I'm going to actually close 50%. So I know I close 25% of every lead that I procure through my network of referral sources. Mm -hmm. When I'm buying leads, it drops from a 25% down to a two, three, or even let's call it a 5%, Damn, single 5%, digits. Single, digits. single digits. So then do I have the, the, the systems in place to be able to stay in front of those people? And by systems, like whether it's uh, CRMs mm -hmm. like Agent Legend or like Big Purple Dot, where when that lead comes in, the system that I had to spend hours helping create mm -hmm. and and um curate to specialize yeah, yeah. yeah curate would, would be your word I like that word a lot by the way curate's better than specialized <laughs> and and also money more money i have to spend mm -hmm. so that that system can do auto texting and auto dialing and auto emailing because it may take me seven attempts within the first x amount of days or hours of receiving the lead to get the person on the phone and when, then when i get them on the phone 
is it the type of lead that that I want? And then how hard do I have to work on it? And then can I make the right amount of money on it? Mm. Or maybe I can't right, make the right right amount of money on it because I now have to lead with rate and fees. So then that means I may uh, have to uh, to uh, to earn half my commission because they don't respect the value I bring. Question for you: um, If newer loan officers that might not like, they're just by themselves, they don't have a team yet, and they're out here like I just started, so I'm buying leads. What does that look like? Are they just dumped like an Excel spreadsheet with like a fake name? number and like an address like they, they usually come in one at a time when the person goes on one of those websites okay. and they inquire uh -huh. and then it's like hey so and so wants an inquiry some of them get some of these these lead generation businesses have an ability to almost like live transfer it to you uh, if you're willing to pay enough money like okay. give give zillow a thousand dollars maybe they'll bring you 13 leads a month mm -hmm. but those 13 leads will be at least be live transferred maybe gotcha. i don't know this, okay, okay but, yeah i know what you mean. but it's it's not an excel spreadsheet they're not that cold cold of leads oh, okay at least the ones that i'm i'm proficient in. okay cool. okay and then so then you're spending a thousand or two thousand dollars on leads are you the type of person that's going to sit there and work them I mean, nights, weekends, calling the same person five, seven, nine times until you get them on the phone. And then when you get them on the phone, can you keep them on the phone? And then when you keep them on the phone, are you the type of person that convinced them that you are the professional they should use? Not their bank, not their credit unit, and not the lender that was referred to them by their realtor. Damn. It's a lot of layers to cut through. It's a lot of layers. Now, if you can learn how to win at that game, you could say, you know what, Dio, I'm going to do it strategically. I'm going to do it short term. Okay. I'm going to spend my $1,000 or my $2,000 a month on leads or $5,000 a month on leads. And I'm going to generate buyer leads, not just people looking for mortgages, people looking for homes. Oh, okay. Maybe they don't have a realtor. Hmm. Well, if I can get them on the phone and I have a system and a process in place where I can stay in front of them and I can touch them seven to nine times in those first three days and I can... Uh, win them over with my professionalism, with maybe some of my, my charm, I then can say, hey, look, John, you're looking to buy a house. Do you have a realtor in mind? I work with a great group of realtors. What, what part of town are you looking to buy in, John? I'd love to recommend a realtor that I trust with my friends and family. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to set that up for you, John? Mm. Oh, wait a minute. I could potentially strategically use buying leads as a way to feed myself, but also to forge relationships in the real estate community. Mm. Because now I'm a lender who has yeah. buyer leads. Right. But I still have to be a great loan officer because I have encountered this throughout my career. Mm. There are loan officers out there that are great at working leads. They buy leads, they work leads, but they're terrible loan officers. <laughs> right? I can see it, yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard to be a great loan officer and a great person who works leads. That just seems like a nut. You got to call people all day. That just seems like you're, a you're on the phone. You're texting. You're using every type of Sandler sales right. training tactic. To but if you're doing that, you've taught me this. Like if you're doing that, you're not out prospecting new leads. You're not closing. You're not book a business. All that other stuff. You're just chasing leads almost. You're chasing leads. It's every day. It's a perpetual cycle of every day. You're you're chasing leads. What you're not doing is learning your programs, products, and guidelines. Mm. What you're not doing is teaching lunch and learns. You know, when you're a loan officer and you teach lunch and learns, the number one way to learn something is to teach it. Facts. Period. End of story. I have taught two classes that I wrote based on books that I read. And I didn't understand the subject matter until I had already read the book once, decided it was a good enough book I wanted to teach a class based on the book's principles. Then I reread the book, took notes so I could teach a class. And then when I taught it, at that time, I felt like I finally right. understood finally the subject clicked. matter. Yeah, finally clicked. Yeah. Mm. But if you're not out there teaching lunch and learns as a loan officer, you're not getting great at your craft from a technical standpoint. If all you're doing is working on your next CRM and your next batch dialer and your next this and your next that as a way to have the lead come into this funnel and send out this auto text, and this auto email, then I'm going to get on a, a certain headset and they're going to auto dial mm -hmm. and I'm going to crank through 100 calls in the next two hours. At what point are you deal structuring? Are you deal making? Are you attending product knowledge workshops? Like you're not doing any of that. And then you look at the money that you're spending. But I was talking before I went down that rabbit hole about strategically how you could do this. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, you could buy leads, work leads, and then refer them to realtors. And then in return, you're going to build trust with that realtor. They're going to want to reciprocate and they're going to want to refer other, their other clients to you. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, that realtor loves receiving your buyer leads, but they don't necessarily love working with you if you don't know what you're doing. 
If you're not also working on becoming a great technical loan officer, one who is a, a, approachable, one who is who proactively communicates, one who is accessible, that's what I meant by approachable is accessible, mm -hmm. who knows program products and guidelines inside and out, at some point that realtor can't afford to refer you to their own leads. They work too hard for those leads for you to screw it up. So what I've found is those that dominate working leads that they buy aren't necessarily the same people who are, who are becoming true mortgage advisors. They're not necessarily the, the people. Now there are people out there and I, I will shout out, there's a guy in Charlottesville, Virginia. He works for a company by the name of Novus Home Loans. His name is Andy Zeman. Mm. Andy has found a way to do it all. Okay. He does it all. He is he is a mortgage coach type mortgage loan originator, meaning he gives consultative services. Mm -hmm. He does total cost analysis for all of his clients. He also lead generates utilizing like SEO and Google Click and Facebook, and he buys leads and he uses those leads to then refer to realtors in the marketplace. Then he accepts referrals from realtors. Mm -hmm. But look, there's a reason why Andy, he's not a one percenter, he's a half percenter. Oh, he's he's in the top one half percent of all mortgage loan originators in the country. Dang. Question for you and everyone else listening is Andy may be an anomaly. Meaning we all might not be good enough to be like Andy. Yeah. We may have to choose our lane. But if you want to go buy leads, I want to suggest that you you buy them and be strategic about it. But if you want a reason not to buy leads, let me just walk you through this math. Yeah, let's do it. You're spending $1,000 a month on leads. $1,000. If a average realtor lunch cost $50, that's you treating a realtor to lunch so that you could sit down and get belly to belly, face to face with someone who could refer you consistent business. I'm not good Not enough. just today, <laughs> yeah. but like how, how far does that go? It goes 20 times, 20 times. Okay, so you could do 20 lunches a month. Do you have any business days yeah, are typically in a month? Day, that's like every day plus every a couple day. Saturdays. Every day. Yeah. Every single day, there's 20 business days in a month. Damn, I did not know that. Yeah, so 20 times 50 is 1,000. If you had $1,000 to spend, I don't know about you, I'd much rather get belly to belly, face to face with 20 referral sources who can refer me business today, tomorrow, next year, and next decade mm -hmm. and build a relationship with them, talk shop, get to know them, their family, let them get to know me and my family. Figure out, are you on the same career trajectory that I'm on? Are you always in growth mode? Because I'm looking for realtors who are in growth mode. How can I help you, John? How can I help you sell two more homes next year? Mm -hmm. I have some ideas of how I could potentially help you sell a couple. But before I give you my ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Let's have that conversation. I promise you, if you're in this business because you want to be a one percenter yourself when it comes to the income that you earn, if you want to earn a quarter million dollars a year or 400 grand a year or 600 grand a year or $2 million -uh. in this industry, I'm not buying leads. I'm not doing it. I like my odds as a seasoned professional. Take away the way the word seasoned, as a professional. Mm. As someone who, who has decent financial literacy and good advice to give, who knows how to deal structure. And if I don't know how to deal structure, I have a team back at the office that'll help me fake it till I make it. I have a great manager. I have a great scenario desk, maybe an underwriter who's accessible to me. That's how I'm spending my $1,000. Question for you. If I'm a if I'm a, if I am an established loan officer and I have a team, I'm already doing this. I'm going out to open houses, but I don't have um, buying leads as a you know qu feather in my quill. If I add that, how much could you expect to for it to increase five percent, ten percent? Is it a waste of my time? Is there like a number you can put to it? Like, well, I would say you're gonna have a five percent conversion ratio. Okay. Right. So if if you buy twenty leads a month, ten percent is two. So then 5% will be one. Mm. You're trying to get one client out of those 20 leads. You spent how much money? Was it 1,000 or $2,000 to get those 20 leads? Mm. Or was it $3,000? What's your ROI? Meaning what's your average commission? Mm. And then look at the hours that you put into it. Yeah. I'm just not a fan. Mm. Now, again, someone could sit down and talk to me about how they run a branch and they use lead generation from the branch level to hire in younger loan originators, and maybe they cut their teeth mm -hmm. by learning how to work leads, learning how to pre-approve buyers, 
learning how to take those pre-approved buyers and leverage them with local realtors to build a relationship? Yes, I could sit down all day long and get excited about running a branch where that was my particular business model, but now I'm doing it at a, at a large scale mm -hmm. and I'm doing it at the branch level, not at the LO level, right? Um, this is your branch is now spending $10,000, $20,000 a month, $30,000 a month in leads. And you have five of you that are Damn, rookie loan yeah. officers on the headsets and the systems and the process and the scripts are already written and all you have to do is learn them. And then when you do get someone who's on the phone and, and, and is willing to talk to you, you have not one but two team leads who are like actual seasoned loan originators who know programs, products, and guidelines that you can then lean on to yeah. make sure you properly pre-approve, properly structure, lock, disclose, and get that loan closed on time. That itself is unique. Most of us don't have that, right? Most of us, we're thinking of, of ourselves as solopreneurs, at which point we are the name, the face, the hustle, mm -hmm. the muscle. That being you, I'm telling you my experience, right? And this is going to grasp the larger percentage of loan originators. Don't buy leads. Just don't do it. Spend your money forging relationships in your local market. And you can probably spend less money. Like I said, get belly to belly, face to face once a day and spend $50 on lunch. Lunch should be closer to $36 yeah, right. for True one, that. right? Yeah. So now you're spending less than $1,000 and 20 is a lot. I would tell you if you're doing 10, 10 a month, that's 120 a year, you're on fire. You're on fire, sister. You're on fire, brother. Like you are on the right trajectory. So can you make money and have a career buying leads? Sure. And if you're going to do it, I'm going to suggest that you also invest in all of the systems that are going to be required, that you go all in to do it, that you don't shy away from still being a great technician and a great advisor, and that you do it strategically because ultimately what you're trying to do is get to the consumer first, then use those leads to forge relationships with the real estate community mm -hmm. to where ultimately maybe you don't need to ever buy a lead again. Or if you do buy a lead, you're now buying a lead for your junior loan officer. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to scale and build a team because you're going to teach others how they can start their business by buying leads if they have the right support system already in place. I still say that's the minority. No. I still say that is way harder to achieve than just taking your 300, 500, 800, or a thousand dollars a month that you have allocated to dedicate to your business and use it for old fashioned breakfast, coffee, lunch, happy hour, mm. belly to belly, face to face, build a real relationship where you are asking the referral source what you can do to help them make more sales, make more money. And in return, they're gonna trust you anytime they have an opportunity to refer you for your goods or your service. Drop the mic. He's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. You've tuned into the Loan Officer Podcast. That is all the time we have for you today. Please, if you like what we're doing, thumbs up, share, tell your friends, tell your manager, tell your coworkers, tell your competitors. Check us out. We love what we do. We want to keep doing it. But if the audience doesn't grow, we can't keep doing it. That's all the time we have for today. We'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.